Fellas, we're talking about pulse rifles. And yes, high impact pulse rifles specifically are quite nasty. Now they got a buff stated in update 2.9.0. Bungie increased the damage per bullet from 21 to 22 in terms of body shot damage. Then goes on to state that this changes it from six crits for that optimal time to kill to five crits in one body at most resilience levels. I'm kind of confused by this because when we actually look back and watch gameplay of high impact pulse rifles just a few weeks ago they were hitting 34 damage per crit which if we did the math 34 times 5 is 170 damage plus a body shot of 21 put us at a total damage of 191 now 191 damage is just enough to kill a guardian five resilience or less now if we take the patch notes off of face value it looks like high impact pulse rifles only went up in one damage in its body shot thus giving us a total damage of 192 allowing us to kill guardians at six resilience or less seems pretty good and it makes sense from the patch notes as it says that it will kill guardians at most resilience levels okay so majority of the resilience levels ranging from six resilience and down which by the way pretty much where we all sit sounds about right what they did not include though which is the biggest selling point to these high impacts is they actually got a buff in its crit damage where it was just a few weeks ago hitting 30 34 damage per crit and i know there's some rounding they're gonna say it's actually 33 i get it 33 34 somewhere around that mark it's now hitting somewhere around 35 to 36 damage per crit which is a pretty substantial bump which is kind of amazing because it wasn't even mentioned in the patch notes just the body shot damage was mentioned so now that the crit shot damage has gone up two to three ticks two things are occurring number one yes you can kill a guardian in 0.67 seconds five crits in one body but not just five Five crits in one body five crits and one body can secure you a kill if it's at 35 damage per crit for guardians eight resilience or less okay so definitely the majority of resilience values and that is of course if we take into account rounding i'm not entirely sure if it's actually 35 per crit or if it's 36 if it's 36 then you could just flat out kill any guardian even max resilience ones at five crits one body regardless the selling point to me throughout all of this is now we have a level forgiveness on a weapon type that is extremely lethal which takes us to some of our favorite high impact pulse rifles today but not necessarily the best because we do have a new seasonal pulse rifle that we have yet to unlock which i think is going to be pretty dang nasty i haven't got to play with it yet if you got it let me know something but two of my favorite pulse rifles in the game right now one being premonition that we reviewed a few weeks ago yes it's right it's my range finder kill clip roll beautiful combination here vertical for the most part sitting at a nice 87 recoil direction the main thing to take away from it is the sheer amount of damage and range that this pulse rifle can reach up to and having that extra bit of damage tacked on both in its critical damage and in its body shot damage allows it to secure those super far off ranges i've sat on this ledge a number of times trying to get kills with a pulse rifle and it's not really efficient guys i'm telling you you're just asking to die premonition here was able to do it not just because of the role it has and this is a pretty good role on this one allowing it to reach up to 41 meters before even seeing any type of damage fall off but having that extra bit of damage allows it to extend its range at least artificially i was very much impressed with this premonition though guys and i will say for anyone that is looking for a very solid roll high impact pulse rifle premonition has a lot of different options you can go with we've covered it multiple times in the past it's one of those pulse rifles that doesn't have a lot of ejection to it mine actually sits somewhere around 60 plus stability which is extremely nice and i will say for the most part pulse rifles you want to sit around somewhere around that 60 plus mark okay if you're looking to maintain all three rounds landing crits you need some added stability i know most of us especially on mouse and keyboard think we need to just opt in completely to range i can tell you right now guys even for mouse and keyboard you still want to opt for stability so much so that this takes us to redrick's broadsword as deadly as premonition is and i very much love premonition and matter of fact when we made this video a few weeks ago i said that i was going to be choosing premonition over redrick's because at the time i thought the only thing that was being an increase was the body shot damage i didn't know the crit shot damage was also being increased redrick's here though is set up perfectly with this pulse rifle change because despite it only reaching up to 38 meters and technically speaking that is kind of poor in comparison to your more high impact variant pulse rifles a large problem i had with redrick's was that it ran into damage fall off right the moment we went from 33 per crit to 32 to 31 hell fellas even with a slight increase there to pulse rifle damage it's still not enough at some 
some point, with damage fall off included, you're gonna have to land all crits. That was until we started hitting 35, 36 damage per crit. This elevates our forgiveness so much more, allowing for more secured five crit, one body shot kills, thus resulting in more precision kills being activated, feeding us that outlaw perk over and over again, and proccing Desperado with ease. Redrix has become a fantastic weapon. I mean, it already was a good weapon. It had some drawbacks, the blinders on the side, the damage fall off, but just simply increasing the damage here has substantially thrown Redrix up, allowing it to be stupidly deadly inside of Crucible. This weapon sits at a 0.67 time to kill, just like the rest of these high impacts, but the moment Desperado is activated and we're clocking somewhere around like 540 rounds per minute with a high impact pulse rifle at that, we start to trim that time to kill value down to 0.47 seconds. And 0.47 for everyone that comes into contact with you. And there's a lot of times I just sit there and I hit fire with Redrix, right? Like somebody rushes me with a shotgun and I don't even care. I'll just sit back and hit fire them before they can get to me. And even then you're looking at a one second time to kill value with Desperado on just body shots, no crit shots, just body shots. You're able to gun them down that fast, which is pretty incredible. Combine this with certain elements. I'm actually rocking middle tree night soccer, taking advantage of flawless execution. This is a deadly combination here for Redrix. And by God, I was having a blast. Again, you saw my last video talking about high impact pulse rifles before the sandbox kicked off. I had no intentions of really going out there and utilizing Redrix in the next sandbox. I've been punished too many times due to damage fall off. I'd found too many scenarios where it was like, you know what? Had I been using a more rangy pulse rifle, something like Premonition or even Einstein, had I been using one of those that was a little more suited for mid range to long range, I would have secured that kill in two bursts. Redrix is now in a position where it can do that. Even though it does start to see damage fall off at about 38 meters, 40 meters, you can pretty much still secure that coveted two burst kill. Now, something I want to bring up about Redrix, considering that range, even though range is important. Matter of fact, the role that you see here is one with a range masterwork. It sits at 73 range and 68 stability. I actually went a different route with it, okay? I'm actually proccing Desperado a lot more often, considering the forgiveness, thus resulting in this weapon pretty much being hell on wheels at every twist and turn of a match. This actually made me change up my barrel perks. I went from using before full bore or even small bore to going all in with it and rocking arrowhead. Now this weapon sits at a 75 recoil direction. If you put a counterbalance mod at it, it'll put it at 90, but even then it's still not perfectly vertical. I actually did a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons here and you really start to take note of the inconsistencies on that second, third shot, right? The separation there, the kind of thing that can result in your shot absolutely missing, especially against opponents that are strafing. And if you happen to not be stationary and you as well are strafing, that adds even more unforgiveness here. Again, this is a very punishing archetype for those that like to move a bunch. You really want to stay put, keep your feet planted, that kind of thing. But Arrowhead Break adds on that extra 25 recoil direction, maxing out our recoil direction at 100, making things perfectly vertical, and tacking on nearly an extra plus 10 there in handling, which I will say about most of these high impacts, the handling's pretty piss poor. So any bit of handling definitely helps. Long story short, guys, I know on my mouse and keyboard, and a lot of people go, oh, you don't have recoil, it doesn't exist for you. It does. Maybe not to the degree that you're used to on console, but it does. And arrowhead break has normally been a trait that I actually say, hey, if you're on console, you're using a full auto weapon or even like a pulse rifle. I recommended that barrel perk, but I never really sold it much for PC users. Now I'm here to tell you, it has made all the difference for me when rocking Redrix. It has made it way more consistent. It's definitely worth utilizing over just flat out counterbalance mod. And it also allows me to open up my mod slot to other things, which is what I did here. I actually threw on a targeting adjusting mod, which tacks on some aim assist. Now you probably heard me say that recoil direction here with arrowhead break raised it by plus 25 and gave us plus nine handling. That's actually from dim. Those are the numbers that the API are actually reflecting. I find it kind of strange because arrowhead break is supposed to increase handling by 10 and give you a recoil direction of plus 30. Now two things could be occurring here. Maybe destiny item manager has a cap or think there's a cap into what it could reflect for recoil direction, considering that it caps out at 100. So going from 75 to 100 is only a 
plus 25. Therefore, it's only going to reflect a plus 25. Why it caps out at plus 9 instead of plus 10, I have no idea. Unless there happens to be a high impact pulse rifle cap when it comes to handling. When I actually check the other pulse rifles that I have, most are relatively low. Einstein's pretty low that I got. My premonition is somewhere around the 20s. It's also very low. So Redrick's may have met some sort of invisible cap that I didn't know was there in regards to handling. Let me know in the comments below if you have any high impact pulse rifle that exceeds the value of 47. Outside of that, guys, give high impact pulse rifles a go in this sandbox. They are very, very good. They do require you to be somewhat stationary, especially if you're relying on that high impact intrinsic perk, but they have a fantastic time to kill value. And whether you're rocking Premonition, Einstein, or even Redrick's, I think they're all going to do very, very well for you. As far as the new high impact pulse rifle that's out, that one's the most intriguing one to me as of now because it is new. We don't get many high impact pulse rifles. I'm hearing mixed things about it. Some people are saying it's good. Some people are saying mediocre at best. It does have a combination of new traits though, such as things like killing wind and multi-kill clip, unrelenting, a lot of different things there that'll make it especially deadly. So if you haven't have any good rolls on that pulse rifle, reach out to me, man. I'm curious. We're going to be going pulse rifle crazy because despite these nasty pulse rifles, and they are very nasty, there's also an exotic pulse rifle that has slipped through the cracks and indirectly got a buff. I'm going to flash on the screen right now. That's all I'm going to say. That'll be our next review, guys. So I'll see you then. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.